thinks we're developing a series of novel proteins that don't exist in nature, but that we call antibody fusion proteins, that actually are directed against antigens that are present on breast cancer cells, but deliver kind of a one-two punch. Not only are they antibodies, but they also work as proteins that either activate the immune system or shut down the development of blood vessels by the tumor in a way that will either eliminate the tumor or retard its growth significantly. One of the proteins that we're hoping to put into the clinic uh, within the next two to three years targets an antigen called HER2, which is prevalent on particularly aggressive forms of breast cancer and uses its targeting ability to deliver a second molecule called endostatin that actually retards the growth of blood vessels in the vicinity of the tumor so that the tumor cannot grow beyond one or two millimeters. And if it can't grow, uh, it's unlikely to do much harm. When one of our fusion proteins actually goes into the clinic and is given to somebody, then I'll probably feel like I died and went to heaven. Uh, you know, that's just something you work for, you hope for, you know, that one thing that actually makes a difference in somebody that you can recognize in your lifetime. One of the problems of cancer is that as a cancer develops, it will suppress the generation of killer cells by the immune system. So one way of correcting it, of course, is to try to have a vaccine that will restore this capacity. And what we have done, we put a gene that has been modified, which we call GP96IG, into uh, these cells, that now the cell secretes the GP96IG molecule, so that this tumor cell now, by secreting GP96, becomes immunogenic. And as this GP96 carries with it tumor-associated antigens. The GP96 binds to another cell which is known as the dendritic cells and activates this cell. Dendritic cells, after activation, expresses additional receptors that can activate CD8 cells. The activation of the CD8 cells leads to the generation of killer cells. And that will go and kill the tumor. We're still far away from really completely understanding the basics of the immune system. And only by investing in that as well will we continue to make progress. We study innate immunity and we're very interested in understanding uh, how uh, we respond to virus infection. We've noticed that cancer cells don't really have uh, normal host defense mechanisms. That means they seem to be defective in their ability to respond to pathogen infection, including viruses. We're very interested in a virus called vesicular stomatitis virus. What happens is there's so much virus that we inoculate into the, into the, into the organism that when the virus bumps into a normal cell, the normal antiviral mechanisms stop the virus from really doing any damage to the normal cell. However, if the virus bumps into a tumor cell, it eventually destroys that tumor cell. Once the virus gets in there, it'll replicate thousands of progeny viruses and amplify itself and then infect surrounding tumor cells and destroy those, and those tumor cells will give rise to thousands of progeny viruses and so on. Eventually, uh, our normal body antiviral mechanisms will stop the virus uh, after about seven to 10 days from really taking over the body. So in that period of time, we want uh, the virus to really uh, have a very good chance of destroying the tumor. The next year is gonna be very exciting for us. If we get this through into the clinic, it'll be a tremendous feat. If one is really interested in treating cancer and studying cancer, then the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Centers, you couldn't be at a better place.